Ling Fei Fei is in her early 20s and moved to Richmond, South Africa two years ago from Jilin in northeast China. She was three and a half years into a law degree at Jilin University when her boyfriend persuaded her to give up her studies and follow him to seek a better life in Africa. Together they run a mid-sized convenience store in a small desert town in the South African Karoo. Ling Fei Fei was the first of many characters I was to have brief encounters with as I drove from the city of Bloemfontein, right in the middle of the country, down to the southern port of Cape Town. I was there to do a story on the World Cup legacy, but chose to drive rather than fly between cities. South Africa is known primarily for its cities, the beaches and the wildlife parks, but few know of the vast majestic landscapes that make up the bulk of the interior and which I was keen to discover. Driving is easy. Most roads run in endless straight lines with the mountains in the distance and huge skies above. At dusk the birds gather and the clouds melt into the warm splattered colours. It's a magical experience and at odds with the image of violent cities from which everyone is warned when planning a trip here. After picking up my car in Bloemfontein, I left the city just minutes after I had arrived heading southwest along the N1, South Africa's best known highway. I stopped at Richmond in the afternoon and having found a place to sleep went out looking for String to tie up my broken suitcase. String? I asked Ling Fei Fei. Do you have any String? She gave me that same puzzled look I get in Beijing when I speak English so I tried Mandarin and was greeted with a stare as if I was from Mars. It's the first time a customer has spoken Mandarin to me, she told me. Richmond is a strange place, a relic of apartheid with a main street that was for the whites, with black and coloured communities across the river. It's very different now, Johan Behedenstout, a local farmer told me as he picked up some supplies. The next evening he invited me out to his sheep farm about an hour's drive along dirt roads where Annika, his wife, cooked Karoo lamb. Johan's family had run the farm for generations and saw the new South Africa as a necessary progress but was frustrated with a dysfunctional local government which had little time for the needs of his family. I was finding it hard to grasp the coexistence of Ling Fei Fei, a Chinese migrant in search of a better life the people from Richmond's squatter camp where I'd spent the afternoon taking pictures, and Johan and Annika, all living in a small community in the middle of a semi-desert. The next day I continued to drive through vast canyons with steep-sided rocks, past ostrich farms and empty brown fields with just a few cactus plants. I drove all day and nearly ran out of fuel for getting a golden rule in these parts. If you see a petrol station, then fill up. As the night drew in, so again the skies turned red, but this time the clouds came down to cover the rocky hills like a blanket. As the car started to stutter, so I reached the rust and its choice of two filling stations. It was there I stopped once more in a comfortable guest house that seemed so easy to find out of peak season. After a strange egg and mince combination breakfast and some incomprehensible directions from a hungover Yorkshireman, I took off for the final push to Cape Town. As I approached, the fields became more fertile and the rivers widened, but it remained a pleasant drive. Approaching the coast, the sky once more turned red and welcomed me into the historic port city I had heard so much about but never visited. With only one day to see all Cape Town had to offer, I started with a morning run along the beach followed by a dip in the icy waters of the South Atlantic Ocean. Shark warning signs gave me a good excuse not to stay too long in the water and I headed back to my lodgings for breakfast. I missed the downtown area but instead drove to the Constantia Vineyards to get an inside view of how some of my favourite wines were made. With the taste of wine on my lips, the warm afternoon drew in and I went back to the beach for a walk on the sands before a final drive around the coast as the ever-predictable sunset drew in.
Driving to the airport the next morning, I stopped one last time at a viewpoint to get a picture of Tabletop Mountain. There Mr. Wang, a Chinese tourist, asked if I minded taking a picture of him with a landmark behind. We chatted for a short while, and I learned that he was a lawyer living in a building opposite the China Daily Office where I worked. I told him about Ling Fei Fei and her choice to give up law school to move to the small desert town, and he looked puzzled. As I left this charming city, I wondered if Ling Fei Fei had made the right choice. I guess I will have to return one day to find out. This is DJ Clark in Cape Town, South Africa, for China Daily.